Welcome back to Show Academy. In the last video, I gave you the full seven step system to crack any paper six question four. Now it's time to put it to work, applying it to real 2024 past paper question. Let's break it down step by step. For March exam, they asked to plan an experiment which will enable her to investigate how changing the thickness of insulation surrounding a beaker affects the rate of cooling of hot water in the beaker. Here's how we apply the seven step strategy, step by step. Number one, what's the independent variable? The thickness of insulation. Number two, can it measure directly? Yes, it can be measured in terms of the number of layers or millimeters. We will test at least five different thicknesses. Number three, what's the dependent variable? Rate of cooling. And is it directly measured? No, it is temperature drop over time. It is calculated using the formula. Rate equals initial temperature minus final temperature, divided by time. Number four, what do you freeze? Write any two from the following. Initial temperature of the water, volume of water in the beaker, beaker type and size, room temperature, lid. Number five, what are the full methods included in the instruments? To carry out the experiment, I will use a glass beaker, a supply of hot water, a lid, strips of insulation, a thermometer, a stopwatch, and a measuring cylinder. For each insulation thickness, I will use 100 cubic centimeters of hot water, record the initial temperature, and measure the temperature every minute for 10 minutes. I will calculate the rate of cooling using the formula, initial temperature minus final temperature, divided by time. For each insulation thickness, I will take three readings and calculate the average. I will test at least five different values of insulation thickness. Number six. The results table. My table will include columns for insulation thickness, initial and final temperature, time, and calculated rate of cooling, with appropriate units in the headings. Set up your table exactly like this. Number 7. Conclusion. Link the IV to DV in one sentence. As the thickness of insulation increases, the rate of cooling decreases. Now gather all of these and write in paragraph form and hod the video and see the mark scheme. Full mark in your bag. For the June exam, variant 1, they asked students to plan an experiment to investigate how much composite strips bend when loaded at one end. This figure shows the setup the student uses. Now let's go step by step using our 7-step rationale. Number 1. What's the independent variable? The number of layers in the composite strip. Number 2. Can you measure it directly? Yes, it can be counted directly as two, three, four, five layers. Number three, what's the dependent variable? The amount of bending, deflection, of the strip. Is it directly measured? Yes, using a ruler in millimeters. Number four, what do you freeze? Write any two from the following. The length of the strip, the material of the strip, the position of the clamp, the size and position of the load. Number five, what's the full method, including instruments? To carry out the experiment, I will use composite strips made of different numbers of identical wood layers, a clamp, a bench, a ruler, and a fixed load such as weights. For each trial, I will clamp the strip to the bench at one end and place the load at the free end. I will then measure the vertical deflection at the end of the strip using a ruler. I will repeat the measurement for at least five different numbers of layers. For each configuration, I will take three readings and calculate the average deflection. Number six, the results table. My table will include two columns, one for the number of layers and the other for the measured deflection in millimeters with appropriate units in the headings. Your final table layout should follow this format. Number seven, conclusion. As the number of layers increases, the deflection decreases. Put it all in one strong paragraph, hit pause, check the mark scheme. That's how you score every point. For the June exam, variant two, the student investigates a metal ball as it rolls from rest down the track shown in the figure and travels through the air. Plan an experiment to investigate how one variable affects the size of this distance d. Now let's go step by step using our seven step rationale. Number one, what's the independent variable? The height of the track, vertical distance from the top of the ramp to the bench. Number two, can you measure it directly? 
Yes, using a ruler or meter stick, measured in centimeters or meters, we will test at least five different heights. Number three, what's the dependent variable? The horizontal distance traveled by the metal ball, distance D in the diagram. Is it directly measured? Yes, in centimeters using a measuring tape. Number four, what do you freeze? Write any two from the following, the same metal ball, the angle shape of the ramp, the surface the ball lands on, for example, always the same tray of sand, and the release point, always from rest, no push. Number five, what's the full method, including instruments? To carry out the experiment, I will use a flexible track, a clamp, a stand, a bench, a metal ball, a tray of sand, and a measuring tape. I will set the track at a fixed angle and adjust the height by moving the track vertically. I will release the metal ball from rest at the top of the track. It will travel along the track and land in the sand. I will measure the horizontal distance from the end of the bench to the landing point in the sand using a measuring tape. I will repeat the procedure for at least five different heights of the track. For each height, I will take three readings and calculate the average distance. Number six, the results table. My table will include two columns, one for columns for the height of the track and the other for horizontal distance traveled, with appropriate units in the headings. This is your table. This is the structure your table needs to follow. Number seven, conclusion. As the height of the track increases, the horizontal distance traveled by the ball increases. Now match it with the mark scheme. Every mark is yours. For the June exam, variant three, a student investigates the relationship between the diameter of a wire and the electrical resistance of the wire. This figure is to show a circuit suitable for measuring the resistance of a wire. Time to break it down using the full seven-step method. Number one, what's the independent variable? The diameter of the wire. Number two, can you measure it directly? Yes, using wires of known diameter or by measuring with a micrometer screw gauge. I will test at least five different diameters. Number three, what's the dependent variable? The resistance of the wire. Is it directly measured? No, it is calculated using the formula. Resistance equals voltage divided by current, where voltage is measured using a voltmeter and current is measured using an ammeter. Number four, what do you freeze? Write any two from the following, length of the wire, material of the wire, temperature, and voltage supply. Number five, what's the full method, including instruments? To carry out the experiment, I will use a power supply, an ammeter, a voltmeter, connecting wires, and resistance wires of different diameters but the same length and material. I will connect the circuit with the ammeter in series and the voltmeter in parallel across the resistance wire. I will switch on the circuit, record the voltage and current, and calculate resistance using R equals V divided by I. I will test at least five different wire diameters. For each diameter, I will take three readings and calculate the average resistance. I will test at least five different values of diameter. Number six, the results table. My table will include columns for wire diameter, voltage, current, and resistance with appropriate units in the headings. This is what your results table will look like. Number seven, conclusion. As the diameter of the wire increases, the resistance decreases. Now fold all of that into one sharp paragraph. Once this is written, hold the video, scan the mark scheme, and smile. You just nailed it. And that's the full plan. Seven steps, one strategy, zero confusion. You've just learned how to turn any experiment into a scoring machine. Now here's what I want you to do. Pause this video, Grab a past paper, pick any question for, and apply the system. Feed it, measure it, freeze it, build it, table it, conclude it. Practice it once, and it'll stick with you forever. And if you've got a question, drop it below. I'm ready. Let's keep scoring. This is Show Academy, where science makes sense. See you soon.